Hello, everyone. We are almost at the very end of our study in John Downham's book, The Fear for Unjust Anger, part of the Puritan Treasures for Today series. And we are in the last section of the book in which Downham speaks about the, the ways, the, the cures, or the, the remedies to cure unjust anger. So last number of parts, we've considered a variety of things to subdue anger and to uh, get patience. Today, we're looking at just one remedy to cure unjust anger, and that is the remedy of avoidance. Not avoidance of anger, necessarily, but avoidance of angry people. So, we avoid angry people. We withdraw from the company of angry others for at least two reasons. One, so that we can avoid being infected by their anger. So, uh, one passage comes to mind is Proverbs 22. 24 and 25, says, Make no friendship with a man given to anger, nor go with a wrathful man, lest you learn his ways and entangle yourself in a snare. If you want to become an angry person, then start fellowshipping with angry people. I hope you don't want to become an angry person. And this is wisdom here. Don't become friends as far as it is possible. You should avoid people who are characteristically angry. And I think you can identify some of those people in your life. You know some who, are, who give themselves over to sinful anger more than others do. And we see in... 1 Corinthians 15.33, that bad company corrupts good morals. We also see the exhortation in Galatians 6.1 from Paul. He says, Brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. Okay? And he goes on, he says, Keep watch on yourself lest you too be tempted. So we want to avoid angry people so that we don't give ourselves to that temptation as well. We want to avoid being infected with anger as well. You know, the more you're hanging out with gossips, the more likely you are going to be to gossip. If you uh, if you are hanging out with people whose speech is crude and lewd, you might find yourself increasingly tempted to, to speak that way as well, even though formerly you, you didn't have that temptation, but now you do. And, you know, one reason for this is you're with people that you obviously care for, you like, and they're doing something and they are really giving you the license to do that. It's, it's a safe space for you to gossip. It's a safe space for you to say that curse word because, well, everyone is, is speaking that way. That's just the culture of you know, that group. Well, we don't want sinful anger to be part of who we are. And one way that we suppress that, one way that we oppose that temptation to sinful anger is to avoid as much as possible those people who might, uh, who might, be, who might tempt us to, to give in to that temptation. Another reason we want to avoid angry people is so that you don't get burned. The first one is so you don't get infected. The other one is so you don't get burned. And Dunham says, 
the companions of angry people are likely to be provoked by them and be burned by the heat of their flame. As one piece of wood being set on fire will kindle nearby wood, so one person inflamed with anger by his or her provocations inflames those who are with him or her. We avoid angry people because what do angry people do? They express their anger at objects. And if you continue to spend a lot of time with them, you will eventually be the object of their wrath. You will be hurt. You will be offended. They will commit injustice. They will injure you physically or uh, emotionally. It's bound to happen. Why? Because they are an angry people. You don't want to subject yourself to that kind of unnecessary pain. So again, as far as it is possible, we want to avoid angry people so that we are not infected with that kind of anger and so that we're not hurt, burned by that kind of anger. Now I know that it's not always possible to avoid angry people. This is just one remedy among many to help cure unjust anger. If you find yourself unjustly angry, then one reason for your continuation in it, you perpetuating in that anger, you have to, you have to consider who your friends are. One reason might very well be that you're hanging out with people who are giving you that freedom to express sinful anger. And they're saying, oh, it's okay. You know, it's, it's, it's fine to vent. It's, it's perfectly appropriate for you to, you know, this is a safe time, a safe place for you just to share all of your anger, and we're not going to judge you. Again, it's not always possible to avoid angry people. You might be living with one. Your, your, your spouse might be angry. Your parent might be an angry person. You might be working with an angry individual. Your boss might be characteristically angry. You can't avoid those people. It might be possible, it might be impossible to avoid some of these people altogether, but usually it's possible while the person is in that heat of anger to avoid that person. So maybe your spouse is very angry. Hopefully you and your spouse come to an agreement that if there is a very passionate conflict and you are not going to resolve it at that time in a peaceable, godly way, then you should agree to take some time, just take a few minutes, go in separate rooms, and to consider why you're angry. And then come back and solve the problem. So even though it's likely impossible to avoid every angry person that you might associate with, it's typically the case that you can avoid to some degree or another so that, again, you're not infected with anger and you're, so you're not burned by anger. That's just, again, one, one remedy, and we'll look at others in the last couple or a few sessions we have. I hope this was helpful. God bless.